I'm Scott Weichel. You're listening to My Kind of Country right here on Fish Creek Radio. Our special guest became known to the general public in 1972 when a song she wrote called The Happiest Girl in the Whole USA began playing constantly on country, pop, easy listening radio. And the song was followed by the equally popular Funny Face. And she also wrote that song. Both songs reached gold and platinum status in the United States, Canada, Australia, and New Zealand. And she became the first woman in country music history to have back-to-back million-selling singles. My Kind of Country is very proud to welcome the happiest girl in the whole USA. Say hello to Donna Fargo. Donna, how are you today? Hello, Scott. I'm doing great. How are you? I am just wonderful. Thank you so much for taking time to be on the show today. It's nice to have you. Well, you're welcome, and I appreciate being on your show. <laughs> well, you are a busy lady. You've got, I was looking at your website, and um, you've got uh, a book out called My Prayer for You. I do. And you've got, you have a whole line of greeting cards, and you have music available. Tell me about some of this wonderful th- stuff you have going on. Well, this, the newest book that I've written, I've written six books for a company called Blue Mountain Arts out of Boulder, Colorado. And uh, this book recent book is called My Prayer for You, and they're going to be doing also a calendar for 2016 uh, with writings taken from the book, and the book can be ordered on Amazon.com. Some of the Cracker Barrels have it and, uh, you know, card stores. Yeah. Uh, I'm also... uh, I'm, it's, I find it hard, Scott, and I'm sure you do too, just trying to keep up with everything. I'm trying to write um, my autobiography in between other things, you know, and I constantly have deadlines for uh, the card company and um, uh, still writing songs and just stay busy as a beaver. Boy, I guess so. Well, you've always been a terrific writer, and you wrote most of your own material uh, for what you recorded in your albums, right? I did. I, I, I wanted to also, and I recorded songs that other writers wrote because I saw myself first, I think, as an artist, although the key to my success, you know, was a lot because of my writing, because I'd written Happiest Girl on Funny Face and, and most of the others that I had the most success with, but I did record other writer songs like Do I Love You, Paul Anker wrote, uh, You Can't Be a Beacon was written by uh, uh, Marty Cooper, and Stonewall Jackson hit, Don't Be Angry, he had a hit on it too, and then I had a uh, hit on it, you know, several years later. Yeah, you sure did, yeah. But, um, I, I did um, have the most success with my own writing. Well, you want to. I gr- really became a writer p- to become a singer, you know. So sure. That's why I wanted to record other writer songs too, so I didn't get too boring. <laughs> well, you had a lot of your songs that were recorded by other artists too, like uh, Tammy. I know did some of your songs and Sonny James and Kitty Wells and quite a yeah, few. Yeah, and uh, Marty Robbins. Uh, yeah. I, I mostly wrote for myself. I was It's always a treat, you know, as a writer to hear another artist sing your songs. And I really would like to concentrate a little bit on, have uh, you know, contributing to another artist's career with, with songs. Oh, sure. That I've written. But I, I'm just kind of bashful and <laughs> chicken about showing them. <laughs> But I do stay, um, I do write songs, you know, all the time. Just, you can't help it once you become a writer. Oh, and yeah. a lot of the greeting cards, too, you know, they're just kind of like songs without music. And it's good therapy to to write uh, anything, even if you're just going to tear it up and throw it away. If you, if you get a, uh, you know, an angry spell coming on, <laughs> You can just write it down and deal with it and rip it up and throw it out. There you go. Or whatever. You know, it's just good therapy, I think. How did you get into the greeting card business? Well, I, you know, I guess I had thought at some point in time that, uh, I I mean, I loved, always loved greeting cards and liked to send them, you know, especially for birthdays and Mother's Day and Father's Day and you know, just to friends or 
cards and say I'm sorry or whatever. And so I thought, well, maybe I should do that too. So I started in the late 90s to uh, write some greeting cards and was fortunate to have a company called Blue Mountain Arts uh, put them out. And then I started writing books for them. And that's where it came about. Wow, that's cool. Well, you have a, a book out called My Prayer for You. Tell me about that book. It's an inspirational book, Scott, just to kind of perk people up. And, um, you know, they're, this company puts out gift books. They're just little, like, coffee table books. And with uh, they're just kind of books of encouragement, you know, about how to get through a uh, crisis or just get through with everyday life because we all experience similar circumstances. Sure. So I like to explore those and uh, try to figure out a new way to say happy birthday and I love you and you made me mad <laughs> <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> those cards don't usually make it, so I don't write many of those. <laughs> Well, you know, one of the things I've always loved about your writing is that, you know, most of your writing is, is very positive, and it's, you know, it, it kind of brings a smile to your face. You know, your, your, your two biggest songs were, you know, just happy, positive things, and, they, you know, they came out at a time when I think the world really needed that. Well, thank you. I, um, you know, at some point in time, Scott, I think that I did think about what direction I wanted to go, and I sort of analyzed my life and thought, well, what do I want to say in life and do in life? And and I always felt like my dream was to become a singer was given to me by God, because when I was a little girl, I just always kept it a secret that I always wanted to sing. And so then, you know, I became a writer to become a singer, to learn to play the guitar just well enough to you know, write down the melodies I was hearing in my head and stuff. But uh, I think at some point in time, too, that, that I wanted to make positive statements and pick people up and make them feel better. And that kind of slowly evolved into, you know, the greeting cards and, and the books. And they're just little, I mean, these books you can read in 30 minutes to an hour and reread sections of them when you know, you feel a little slump. <laughs> sure. Or whatever. Well, that's great. And you have a, a, a recent single uh, that you released called I Love You More. Tell me a little bit about that. Yeah. We, uh, we put that out, of, I think it was maybe a year ago. Um, it's just a song I wrote. People kept nagging me about putting out music. And, you know, if you're not with a major record label, it's just a little harder now. Uh, to do that, but um, and I'd written a song called We Can Do Better in America, and we put that out, oh, about three years ago, I think, and um, I've always been thought of myself as a patriot. I wrote a song several years back called uh, U.S. of A, and um, so I, I just write what's on my heart at the time, and I Love You More is just a pretty love ballad, and People would say, I love you, and I'd say, I love you more, you know, so I thought, and a lot of people say that, so I thought, well, I should write a song called that, so I did. Well, there you go. <laughs> That's really great. <laughs> you know, I, uh, you, won, you, won, you won so many awards, and, you know, I, I can sit here and take up the whole entire interview going all over the awards you've won, you know, the Grammys and everything. What was the most special thing for you, the recognition that you received for your music? What was, what was most special to you? Well, I appreciated every single one of them. Um, I, it, I, was, I really appreciated Happiest Girl being, receiving that Robert J. Burton Award for Most Played Song of 1972 uh, because it, it encouraged me as a writer. You know, and every time you turn on the radio, you would hear it and stuff. So it, it, um, that was one of the most. And but every one of them, you know, meant something special. And just every time anybody bought a record or or would 
call a radio station and request a song of mine. I was just, oh, it's, that's like an award, you know. Oh, yeah. You know, it's, it's, what's important is when people let you know that your music matters, you know, or something you've written in a book or a card. I get letters all the time about people sending uh, them cards that I've written, and, you know, it's just heartwarming. You know, one of the things I noticed looking through your website and uh, and on Facebook, you have a fan page there and you have your own page there, is the is the loyalty of your fans. And, you, and, and all the time, you know, you hear you, you get all these wonderful comments from your fans and the and stories and memories. And I think that's just tremendously wonderful that you've ha have so many loyal fans that still are with you through all these years. Yeah, I I love the I love my fans. It's they're They'll lift you up every time you get down, you know. They'll do something special. So, Even the, the people will update me on their lives and tell me they're going through problems. A guy called this morning, and he was going to uh, AA. <laughs> he has a problem, and I just like to encourage him, you know. And he had heard another interview that I had done, and... He was about to fall off the wagon, and he said, I just knew I, I couldn't do it. <laughs> you know, I had to go to AA, and I just love AA for these people that have problems like that. You bet. You bet. Well, folks, I want to remind you, you can go to DonnaFargo.com, and it's a wonderful website. You know, I, I can just, I spent a long time just looking through all the letters and stories and all the wonderful merchandise. I mean, you have your greeting cards, you have photos, you have CDs, just, you know, everything you can think of is on the website and your books and, and it, everything that's on there is, is positive and uplifting. And I think that's just great. Let me ask you a question. Looking back before you had a record deal and everything and, and then looking to now, what would you have thought back at that time if you would have known the success you were going to have and where it brought you now? What, what what would you have thought back in those early days? You know, I had no clue or idea that of what was coming next. I think the important thing in life is to do what you feel led to do. And, uh, I mean, you need to have a kind of a basic plan, but... I was just trying to be a songwriter, trying to be an artist. So uh, when I taught school in California, after I, you know, learned to play the guitar and started writing songs, I would work some clubs in Southern California just so I could go on stage without fainting, uh, you know, so I could figure out if that's what I really wanted to do. And And it was almost like... I didn't, I didn't think that much about it. I just did what felt natural, you know. And I knew that I had to, if I ever was going to have a show, I would have to have some kind of plan for it, you know. So I learned a lot in those days, just learning what songs worked and how long you have to rehearse with a band and, and that kind of thing. Because before then, you know, or at that time, I didn't have my own band and stuff, I only got my band after Happiest Girl and I quit teaching and that kind of thing but I did I didn't have any idea it was it was just a great uh, blessing and surprise and uh, I just took it a day at a time I mean what thrilled me at first was being able to hear my songs on the radio oh yeah I was teaching school and and I, uh, I remember I would go to the stations and take my little records to them, you know, and say, play this record. <laughs> and some, a guy in at KCKC in San Bernardino, he pulled it out of the trash. He said, oh, you mean this thing that I got in the mail today? I said, yeah, you play that record. <laughs> so I guess I got him, huh? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> But anyway, I loved the DJs, and I appreciated them so much. And when I'd hear my song on the radio, it just thrilled me to pieces. <laughs> but right. then you just kind of take it, you know, as it comes. And um, I opened in Vegas with Roy Clark. Uh, right, but well, school was 
about to be out, and I had to give exams, and I wanted to grade my kids' papers. My, I wanted to do their grades myself. So, but they wanted me in Vegas too, my agent. And so I got permission to leave school early and give my exams early. So, <laughs> do the grades myself. myself. <laughs> But it was a learning experience, let me tell you. Oh, I bet. Well, you and Roy Clark were label mates. You were both on Dot Records, right? We were, yeah. And I listened to his show every night, Scott, because he was he was such a showman, and, and he paced his show. See, I didn't know anything about pacing a show or, you know, I don't know. And I came up with my own little comedy routines and stuff about teaching. And it's a lot of work, it <laughs> you is. know, to to plan a show, and especially when you're starting from scratch and you haven't had that much experience. So many people don't realize how much work goes into performing, and you know they think you just kind of magically show up and it's all great, you know. But there's a lot of work, a lot of traveling, a lot of preparation, a lot of practicing. And but the important thing, I think, is to make a long story short. I think you just have to, you know, do what you feel led to do at the time and and hope for the best and and just be thankful, you know? Because if I hadn't written the song, if I just sat around dreaming about it, it would have just been a dream, you know? Well, that's but, good advice to anybody that wants to get into music. Chase your dreams and don't give up, that's for sure. Yeah, for sure. And and, Donna, you had a very successful TV show as well. Can you tell me a little bit about your TV show? Oh, that was great. We were... Um, uh, let's see, Mel Tillis and um, the Oak Ridge Boys and I were performing at Carnegie Hall. Wow. And we had the same agent, agent Jim Halsey. Uh-huh. And so the Osmonds came to that show and saw us, and uh, that's how that TV show came about, because they produced the TV show and approached my agent and asked if I'd be willing to, to uh, you know, do a TV show. And I said, well, I'll do it for a year because back then, if you were on TV too much, you know, it just seemed like you're, you weren't taking care of your record career. Sure. That kind of thing. But it works different now. But um, anyhow, that's kind of how it came about. You had some. And, uh, you had some great people on that show too. Oh yeah, we had. Great, uh, great people on the show. I know there's still some, uh, you can see some footage. Are those available on DVD at all, do you know? I don't, I don't know. I know you can, there's some on YouTube. I've seen some footage on YouTube, and they're, yeah. they're great. The you know? Osmonds probably still own that, that stuff. I don't even know, I don't even have copies of all of them. I'd send them out, you know, for different reasons from time to time, or somebody would, and... You know, you get so busy, you don't keep up with uh, having a record of everything, and <laughs> you know. You know, I'm always amazed when I hear that. I've talked to a lot of different artists, and they tell me that you know they don't have you know their records and things like that, and I, that, that just strikes me as, as kind of odd. Well, you don't know enough, and, you know, because it's happening to you so fast. I mean. Uh, now, a lot of people, they want memorabilia, you know, they want something from an album or picture, they want the top you wore on such and such an album or whatever. <laughs> and I've, I'm sure with the Happiest Girl album, I had just wore a little checkered shirt, and I'll bet you I gave it to Goodwill. <laughs> Afterwards, I'm thinking, you know, well, I've already worn that, and people, you don't want people to see you in the same shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Now I'd give anything if I have it. I had it. Yeah. <laughs> but you just learn as you go and make mistakes, and that's the way it is. <laughs> I got a couple of my favorite songs of of mine that I wanted to ask you about. One of them is Superman. Can you tell me about that one? Sure. Um, well, uh, I just I didn't want to get typecast as just the happiest girl with the funniest face, <laughs> you know, <laughs> so, and I think in a situation when two people are married, and my husband was my producer and manager, and uh, it was just a little statement, uh, a girl statement against, 
men sometimes when they just get too big for the breeches. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, well, I live here too kind of thing. But he's he's just perfect. And I really, for all those guys that are only children and all that stuff. Tell me about Little Girl Gone. Well, that was just a song in my imagination about going back home and and revisiting memories. Uh, we re-recorded that for Mercury, and I actually liked the re-record better. It was a little different rhythm and a uh, different approach. Yeah, so do I. That, that's yeah. interesting you bring that up. I, I was going to mention that, and I am I feel the same way. I like that version better. That's interesting. Well, how interesting. Yeah. Thank you for telling me that, because yeah. I... I always thought that we could have done that better. There are a few songs that, you know, when you're just in the studio and you're doing them and you've just written them, say, uh, you know, you have your afterthoughts, say, damn, I wish I'd done this or that or the other to it, you know, or wish I'd have started with a chorus instead of whatever. And you, But you don't get those afterthoughts because they're 20-20 hindsight after you get home and, you know, three weeks later or whatever. Yeah. That's and then a, it just costs too much money to go back in and yeah. redo it. That's for sure. But I, I did like that version of Little Girl Gone better than than the original. That's cool. I'm with you on that one. That's really cool. Well, good. Thank you for listening and for knowing that. Well, absolutely. Well, well tell me tell me what's coming up for you. Are, you. are you planning to do some more recording and another book? Tell me what's going on in your life. I, uh, I'm always working on ideas for you know, writing or writing music or books or whatever. I actually want to write a novel, and I've started it, but uh, I don't have much time to, you know, work on it. And it's funny, it's like um, when you have deadlines for a company, it's easier to meet those deadlines than it is to just say on your own, well, I'm going to write a novel when you don't, you know, know what the next steps are and all. But... Um, and I'm working on my autobiography, too. So I'm constantly writing something or lots of things. Um, and I would like to have a music-related project that goes along somehow. I don't quite have it figured out yet. But I'm working on that idea just loosely. Well, you know what I'm saying? It's not yeah. all like ducks are not in the row and <laughs> sure. <laughs> I, I just have kind of a general idea of somehow a CD connected to a novel that would represent I'm telling you all my secrets now Scott <laughs> about what I'm planning to do kind of but that's in my brain well see that there was a, there was a method to my madness that's why I asked you know I was hoping you would tell me that yeah. <laughs> well find out my secret you got me <laughs> Well, I, I want to thank your husband, Stan, for uh, setting up the interview. He was a very nice man to talk to. You you guys have been married for 46 years, is that right? A hundred years. A hundred years? Yeah. <laughs> Not counting tomorrow, right? <laughs> yeah. Thank you. He said he said you were a very nice person, too. Well, he was a joy to talk to, and I, I really appreciate him uh, setting this up, and it's been a joy to talk to you as well, and I know your fans will look forward to anything that you get out there. And uh, if we can help in any way, we would love to. And I, I hope to uh, play new music from you anytime. And uh, again, Thank I, I want to mention. in and out a little bit. Oh, yeah, well, you, you have that, I guess, sometimes with the phone. But I want to make sure folks go and visit DonnaFargo.com and just spend some time on there. Look at the wonderful stories and all the things that you have available there. It's, it's, just, it's just a fun time to sit and look at all that. And, Don, I want to thank you so much for being on the show. It's been a pleasure to talk to you. Well, thank you, Scott. I appreciate your having me on your show, and I wish you lots of luck with it. And Well, Don, I'd like to play one of your songs, and I'd like for you to pick pick one of your songs that we can play right now. Wow, I get to pick? You get to pick. You're going to be the DJ. Oh, my gosh. Well, I guess, Scott, I would have to pick Happiest Girl because it, it because of nice DJs like you. It allowed me to have an audience and to to have people appreciate my music and it's a song I wrote and all the wishes in it would be for your audience and you. 
called Happiest Girl in the Whole USA. All right. Donna Fargo, it was a pleasure having you on the show. God bless you. Thanks for taking the time. I really enjoyed talking with you. Oh, I enjoyed talking to you, too, Scott, and I wish you well and love you to pieces. Well, love you, love you more. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Donna Fargo in My Kind of Country. Here's the happiest girl in the whole USA as we continue right here on Fish Creek Radio.